Dave got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing? Doing okay. Um, there's a temptation. There's a temptation to talk about the draft, but yeah, oh, man, there. I feel like everyone's everyone either has done it or is doing it, and I don't know what. Hey, so and so got picked here. You already knew that. Here's some very shallow analysis on what that might mean. It just whatever. Other people are going to do it. Go go listen to them. Uh, we're going to do something not draft related. Although congratulations to everyone who uh, got drafted this weekend or last weekend, and even or even got um, undrafted as well because there were, there was many got Buckeye un- players who I know. I'm just trying to wrap my head around the phrase "got undrafted." <laughs> who, all, all, all the Buckeye players who got contracts let's say all the guys who there got contracts go. there you go Buckeye yes, Browns baby Buc- yeah a lot of a lot of former Buckeyes taking a pretty short trip up to Cleveland yeah all right but that is not what we're talking about today today we're talking a little bit of recruiting um since the last time Kyle we did a recruiting update since the last time I think I think, I think we did an update in between the last mock, but definitely since the last mock, um, there have been some changes. Um, and, and since our last recruiting update, I know there's been three additions to the Buckeye squad. Um, Jordan Lyle, who is a running back, which takes Ohio State up to three running backs, but we'll talk about that. And he takes him up to three running backs because of Sam Williams, Sam Williams Dixon. I always want to say Sam William, Sam Williams, Dixon, um, also a running back, also committed to the class. Um, they might be seeing him as more of a hybrid running back receiver gadget sort of guy, which is why they're taking three running backs. When I think m- most people, myself included, only had only had two running backs to Ohio State, but they they might not see um, Sam Williams dixon as a quote-unquote true running back Mm. and a tight end uh who uh originally hails from canada uh in max leblanc yeah a lot of a lot of a lot of players uh already committed for this uh 24 class so obviously is up to 13 commits already yeah, uh, the offense is really sort of we're getting we're getting close to like done on the offense, I would say. Yes, um, I would think so, too. Defense defense still still got some holes to fill on the defense. And while they're close to done on the offense, they are not done. Um, but but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Um, so Kyle, I I think let's, let's go ahead and, and, and talk about that. Um, quarterback, Aaron Noland committed to the class. I don't know, Kyle, do you, do you think there's any, any fear here? You have any concerns whatsoever? I mean, he's still pretty new commit. Um, no real indication he's shopping around or anything like that. No, no, I haven't heard anything at all so i think i think he's a he's a buckeye through and through here so i think you feel pretty confident that he's he's going to remain a buckeye when it's uh all said and done yeah i i no no fear not at this time anyway you know these are kids and things change and you know we didn't have much he's he's a second quarterback in this class and we didn't have a whole lot of fear surrounding the uh the, the first quarterback so and then all of a sudden there was I'm sorry, my seat shrunk. I need to fix it real quick. Kyle, tell us, uh, we already talked about Jordan Lyle. We already talked about Sam Williams Dixon. Uh, What do you think about Peoples? Man, Peoples, yeah, James Peoples, I I really, really like. Uh, This is the uh, kid out of um, San Antonio, Texas here. Uh, I I think when, uh, when Buckeye fans found out that they weren't going to get a certain uh, running back from the state of Ohio, but then could turn around and find out, oh, well, actually, we're getting a um, a higher ranked running back coming in here, too. So I think a lot of Buckeye fans were happy to hear that when, once he committed. 
Yeah. So again, that's that is three running backs committed to this class. Um, but Sam Williams Dixon, maybe not a, a quote unquote true running back. Kyle, everyone's favorite position uh, in regards to recruiting wide receiver. Oh, I thought you, I thought you were going to say the tight end. No, that's <laughs> that's our favorite preseason meme. Um, but no, wide receiver. Uh, Kyle, already two great ones in in the class. Yeah, uh, Jeremiah Smith and Mylon Graham, and they're not done. I don't think no. they're, I don't think they're done. I, I think they're you're going to see two, maybe two more here when it's all said and done. Uh, I think right now, a part of my mock that I a part of our mock that we, we've put together here, um, we have Jeremiah McClellan to to join the class. Um, now, I also have Josiah Trader, a part of this class. It needs to be said, and I have him as a part of the wide receivers. It needs to be said he might be a corner. Josiah Trader is such a talented individual that you you get him on campus first. And you worry about what position he plays later. Yeah. Yeah. So when it when it comes to uh when it comes to Josiah Trader, wide receiver, corner, corner, wide receiver, I'm I don't think anyone knows for sure yet. However, um, right now I have him listed as a wide receiver right now. I have him as the fourth wide receiver in this class, rounding out the, the wide receiver position. Yeah. And, uh, Jeremiah, uh, McLennan, I'm just pulling him up real quick here. Um, I don't, don't let his, uh, numbers fool you here. No, um, it says, Oh, he's, he's, he's only the 30th best uh, wide receiver why is why is brian hartline going after yada 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 well I, I don't i don't think we need to uh to really um question brian hartline yes question <laughs> brian hartline's um options to choose on who he would like to have come to ohio state here so if he if he thinks jeremiah is going to be a, a great talent to come here then then full 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 belief that uh that Brian Hartline knows knows what he's getting into. Worth noting, and and I know he 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 finished the recruiting class much much higher than this. But since it is draft weekend, let's let's go ahead and pull this gem out of our pocket. When, when, when Jackson Smith and Jigba committed to Ohio State, he was the 59th wide receiver in the class. Now that was just maybe a, a, an issue of the recruiting services needing to catch up a bit because he he finished the recruiting class much higher, much <laughs> yes, much higher, much, much higher. But it's still it's you know sometimes the recruiting services are a little bit slow to catch up and sometimes they just disagree and and all of that is fine. Yep, yep. All right, Kyle. Tight end position. Max LeBlanc already talked about him. Kid originally from Canada. He's in the class. I'm thinking two. All right, yeah, Ohio State doesn't really typically get multiple tight ends. So who, who do you got as the second one? Is that true? I, I want to say so. I mean, if you really want me to look it up, I'll go and look it up here. But I, I think mean, historically they, they really don't. I mean... I mean, I, I, I'm not going to ask you to look it up, but I feel like they didn't last year, but they did the year before last, if I'm remembering correctly. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, I do think they're going two tight ends in this class. Um, I think this is a room that they're going to lose a ton of players out of here in uh, af after this next season. Did you see tight end recruiting get better when Keenan Bailey... Uh, in charge with Keenan Bailey in charge. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I would say so. Yes. Keenan Bailey's an excellent recruiter. Um, but yeah, the uh, tight end room, I, I think there's going to be a lot. And I mean, a lot of attrition in that room after this season and even before this season, potentially. Um, so let's, 
going to have to going to have to maybe go get a guy. Um so or a couple guys. So yeah, uh Max LeBlanc in the class. Demarion Witten out of Cleveland, out of Cleveland Glenville, I uh, will uh mark as the second guy. Uh this is a if Max LeBlanc is is more your pass receiving tight end out of the class, Witten might be more your your blocking tight end out of the class. Um but again, that Cleveland Glenville pipeline is back open and 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 feeding. Yes. Yes, really looking forward to the future that that school has to offer here. Okay, almost done with the offense. By the way, Jared, by the way, by the way, tight ends. Last time I was saying had more than two or more than one, excuse me, more than one. And actually, technically true, also more than two. Um, Back in 2016. Really? I could have sworn they've had a multi tight end class. Nope. I think 2016, maybe because... 20, 2016 is when they had um, uh, Hosman and Luke Farrell and a uh, Kerr Hawkins, three tight end class. I think, I think they, I, I want to say it was the 20, maybe it was the 2021 class. I think they, they held two tight ends in the class for a while and then one of them processed out, if you catch what I'm saying. Um, so maybe that's why I'm confused. And also it might not have been 2021. It might've been 2020. I honestly don't remember, but okay. And by the way, um, you need to go back through your numbers and, and revise them and move Cade Stover over to tight end. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's not going to show like that in the recruiting profile. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll, well, I'll I'll what? Wait a minute. time out. Was Kate Stover a, recruited as a linebacker or was he just marked an athlete? He's, I think he was a linebacker, but I will I will it, look. Li- Gangland says linebacker. Let's just trust Gangland. Uh, offensive line. Man, we. It, it seems like especially the past 10 years or so, maybe not quite long that long, but it always seemed like Ohio State always seemed to, not always, but they seem to miss on getting offensive linemen into Ohio state uh, uh, the, having the, like a really good, having like a really good offensive line class. Like they may get like one really good one or two. There's there a coaching like, change. There was a to- coaching but, change made because of that. Um, yes, exactly. Yes. And that was, I was getting there, Jared, but, <laughs> but not now with that. Now with the coaching change here, Ohio state has a very strong has a very strong offensive line class and man yeah it's you're going to be hearing offensive line discussion a lot during the off season here but it's really great to see that th- this class already has four offensive linemen um already uh commits already yeah absolutely um all of them local ish um what ohio state has been struggling to do is to go get a big impactful out of state let me let me emphasize that part out of state offensive tackle it's been a struggle as of late and quite frankly kyle what is ohio state missing out of this class right now because you have Devontae Armstrong and Deontay Armstrong. Um, one's a bit one's your big offensive tackle, but they're 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 from Ohio. So we're not breaking the out of state curse. Um it's it's been suggested Devontae, who played guard in in um high school, could could play tackle, could play tackle at the next level. So I mean his twin can do it, why can't he? Um, right. So yeah, get the Armstrongs out there. But again, we're still looking for like a, maybe a big out of state offensive tackle. Um, they had Mark, uh, Nave interior guy also in state. And they also add Ian Moore. Who's an interior guy. Who's, uh, Indiana, which as I've stated on this podcast before, and I'll say it again, Indiana's in state as far as I'm concerned. So 
what Ohio State really needs and they still really need in this class is an impactful offensive tackle from out of state. They need a they need another because again, Deontay Armstrong tackle. Excellent. Cool. Devontae Armstrong may be a tackle. And then you have two interior guys. Like you, you need another tackle. Not someone who maybe could play. You know, you need you need to go get another tackle for in this recruiting class. Mm-hmm. Um I have a bunch of guys who I think it could be. Um right now I have Lambert, um uh Gerby Lambert. Uh that's who I have at the moment. I think there's some other names to keep an eye on. Um, I think Brandon Baker, uh, Jameson Riggs are, are two uh, very possible names who could go here as well. Um, but for right now, I'm going to go with Lambert. But yeah, they, they really, really need another like true offensive tackle in this recruiting class. Yeah, I agree. And I, I really Jordan like Lyle Lambert. equals speedster. Yeah, no kidding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I like your your thought about Lambert here. Uh, yeah, I agree. Getting getting another stud here. You fill out this class with five offensive linemen. And then you call that a win here. Um, I had a question from Zach here. Uh, could we see two tight end sets to help out with blocking this year? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And, yeah. and we saw we saw that in the spring game and we even saw that last year as well, too. There was definitely a number of plays where you saw two tight end sets. You're, you're, you're going to see that. You're going to see that again. And we're going to talk about it a little bit later in in the podcast. But Ohio State has also reached out to the transfer portal for some assistance along the offensive line as well. But let, let's stay focused on this class for right now. We'll talk about transfers a little bit later on. Um, sad that our last year of Marv will be with a bad offensive line with no pass pro. Hey, don't don't throw don't throw don't throw in the in the towel yet. Um, the, the, I, I swear to God, guys. This team's an offensive line away from a national championship. Again, if we can sort of maybe dip our toes back into the land of the NFL draft. I've seen early mocks and early mocks are fucking worthless. I get it. I get it. I've seen early mocks that have as many as eight Buckeyes in the first round. Eight Buckeyes off of this squad. Into the first round of the NFL draft next year. I've been telling you guys for years how special that recruiting class is. And it's not all of the all of the juniors. It's not all three year guys, but it's a lot of those three year guys. Can't wait to fry it up. Hey, got to give fry. You, you, you can't turn around a offensive line room in a year. You just can't. Um, but, you know, they, they get some transfer portal help and. This is a good this is a good start to an offensive line class. It really is. Need to add a premium offensive tackle still, and I think they'll be good. And I think this will be exactly what you wanted. You're getting a big assist from from Ohio high schools in this class, which, hey, maybe that's exactly, you know, sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes you need a a bit of a, a pick me up. From in state and, and they got it. it. It's nice when you can get a pair of twins. Someone clip that out of context for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that's the offense again, like not a lot of blanks to fill here. I, I'm only adding four players to the existing a pair or set. Well, it, uh, I think both are applicable. I, I think both words are applicable. Um, mm-hmm. A pair. Okay. The, but, and by the way, of those four, Josiah Trader might be a corner. So it might be three. All right, Kyle, let's move on to the defense. Where do you want to start on yeah. the defense? 
Well, let's let's start with the only two commits for the defense here, and that's the linebackers. And that is a different story on the defensive side, isn't it? Yeah. And that's Garrett Stover and Peyton Pierce, both lime line, not lime, lime linebackers. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. um, So let's talk about the linebackers. You got Peyton Pierce. You got Garrett Stover. That's a familiar name. He's also being. I think he's current. I think he's still being listed as an athlete um, on, on the recruiting services. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't like whatever's <laughs> happening in the chat right now. <laughs> I, I, is Garrett Stover still being listed as an athlete on, on 24 seven Kyle? No, um, it says linebacker. Now. Oh, does it say, does it say, okay. I mean, okay. So it does say linebacker now that that's good. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do see him as a linebacker. Um, I think Ohio State adds potentially one more linebacker. They'll add one more linebacker if it is the correct linebacker. I think they will stay at two unless they get like the guy. You know, they're, they're, they're not going to they're not going to take a third linebacker to take a third linebacker. Now, luckily, Ohio State just made the final three for um, Kingston. Guys, work with me on this one. Everyone work with me on this one. Kingston via Ma'u Asa. Listen, is that is that correct? Did I say that correctly? No. Did I get pretty close for a white kid from Ohio? I think so. I think it wasn't too bad. Always pronounce it wrong. That's what I'm saying. Like... I, I feel like that was a good effort. Kings. No, it's definitely what King stud Kingston. Kingston. I, I said it right. I said it right. There's a G in there. I said, I said, I said the first name, right? All right. Moving on, Jared. La- that that, that, <laughs> that last on. name. I don't know, but I, I, I nailed the first name. I nailed the first name. So, yeah, our first addition to the, the uh, defensive class uh, will be Kingston. We'll just leave it at Kingston for the moment. Um, defensive tackle. Man. The, these are my biggest toss it to the basket and maybe it goes in. Um I, I'm I'm still pretty lost on where the defensive tackle room is is at this point. I had Jaden Jackson in the last mock. I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna stick with Jaden Jackson. Um, I moved uh, Nigel Smith, Nigel Smith into the defensive tackle rotation. I think they would potentially take three here, but my God, this is gonna this is gonna be a big recruiting class anyway. Um, I have this as a I. I know I haven't said this every time, but next to every position I have like how many guys it could potentially be. And I have the mock total at 26 to 28, which is pretty big. But again, there's going to be a lot of attrition off of this football team next year or at the end of next season. They're going to lose a ton of guys. So you're probably going to take in a pretty big recruiting class. Um so, yeah, I have Jaden Jackson, Nigel Smith in the defensive tackle recruiting class. Could be a third guy, but right now we're going to stick with those two. Smashing indeed. You better <laughs> be a mean mf if you're named Nigel playing D-line. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I, I have a hard time figuring out where, who, for this class as well, Jared, like, who ultimately is going to be coming to Ohio State here? So yeah, I'm lost at defensive tackle still. I'm I'm, I'm just yeah. I'm I'm doing my best. Um, I could probably also throw out uh, Aiden Breeland or uh, DK Kirk in there as well. Uh, I, I think are other uh, two potential names to look out for. There are more. It doesn't even just stop there. I think I'll stop there. That's four names for, I think two position or, you know, two spots on the roster or in the, not the roster, but the draft class. Um, Defensive end. I have a better footing on and I say a better footing because I feel like there's a lot of guys who they're in really great in really 
Mm, I lost that set in t- halfway through. Try it. again. Yeah, I'll try again. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna rewind. We're gonna cut all that out. We're gonna edit all that out. No, we're not. And I'm gonna try that sentence all over again. Defensive tackle, I'll feel a little lost. Defensive end almost feels more like an embarrassment of riches um, because they're in good with a lot of good guys right now. I don't know how many defensive ends they can actually end up taking into this class. Again, this is going to be a really big class. The offense has already taken up a bunch of the spots. Um, But for right now, I'm going to go with Darian Mayo and Marquise Lightfoot. Uh, those are two guys I have in the class right now. I think there are other guys to look out for. Um, Booker Pickett, Dylan Stewart, Elias Rudolph, I think are all guys who you could potentially yeah, I, see. I, yeah, I really like Eli, um, uh, Elias Rudolph and Hira. Kid in Florida, but it is currently playing in uh, Taft High School right now. I thought it was the other way uh, around. Is it the other way around? Maybe, yeah. maybe I got them. He's mixed originally from Taft, but he's now playing in Florida. Yes, I see that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Gangland in the chat. So how many guys total could we take? I, I, I'm marking it as 26 to 28. Um, again, also the recruiting class last year was several people smaller. Um, than they expected it to be. So small recruiting class last year, a lot of attrition, a lot of third year players are going to leave after this year. So a lot of attrition. Um, I'm marking my cap. I capped myself at 28. I removed a couple people who I think have a real decent shot, a real decent shot at being in this class. I removed them because I capped myself at 28. Um, Esquire says 30 feels like the absolute ceiling, right? 30 feels like a lot, but here's the thing. I'm not even going to tell you you're wrong. And if you want to say absolute ceiling, then yeah, I think 30 is probably a good number. If you want to set like a, a, you know, a debt ceiling that we will never, ever hit. Right. Um, Yeah. I I think 30 might be a good spot. 27 to 29, definitely a big class for us. Yeah. I I don't think 29 is ridiculous. Honestly, 30 is not super ridiculous. It just feels super ridiculous to say because Ohio State doesn't typically go above like 25, 26. But yeah, small, small recruiting class, lots of attrition after this season. It, it could potentially be a very big, big recruiting class, which is one of the reasons why we haven't seen Ohio State come out this early with this many recruits. I mean, maybe at this point, but this has been a fast recruiting class by by Ohio State standards to have this many players signed already. Um, but yeah, I anyway doesn't it doesn't matter. I, I think again, I capped myself at twenty eight. That that that's just where I'm at. I capped myself at twenty eight. Um, I yeah, I, I mentioned some of the other defensive ends who who could be in this class as well. So yeah, I did that already. Um, so linebackers, like, like the- we already talked about linebackers. I just want to throw out uh, real quick, um, Kawhi Birdsong, I think is another guy. I said, you know, they have their two. They only take a third if it's like the right guy. I said Kingston. I think Birdsong could also be like that right guy. Who they'd make room right, for. Kind, 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 of, kind of like the defensive ends where there's a lot of great names that Ohio State is in good relationship with. Yeah. I absolutely. think the same thing could be I think the same thing could be with the corners as well. I think there's a lot of great names out there that Ohio State's in really good shape to have them come to Ohio State here. I agree. And uh look no yeah, further. Currently than, zero in the class, which is not <laughs> not what you want, but as Kyle said, they have a lot of like great relationships right now so i'm not really too worried about it yeah i mean look, look no further than um your your hometown bryce west aaron scott gotta, um, gotta, gotta those, lock those two guys down gotta lock them down yes absolutely and i and i think ohio state I feel is in good really good record. shape for both for both of them as well too i think if you look at all the crystal balls they ohio state's sitting really well that that glenville Damn breaking news. Oh, something yeah, break. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Oh, okay. 
Uh, yeah, we'll add that to the maybe to the Kyle's corner as well. Um, so yeah, the yeah corners. I think again, a lot, lot of good relationships here. Um, yeah, Bryce Scott, the Glenville Pipeline. That's what we were talking about. Uh, CS Esquire. Uh, two more names, Kyle. Uh, we're going to say four corners. We're going to say four corners. I think there's, a, as you pointed out, a lot of good guys to pick from. Um, who, who's going to be your third guy? I, I've been hearing Miles Lockhart. Yeah. I think is, is another name here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a guy who, by the way, for a long time was sort of being considered a running back at least in some of the recruiting services corner especially if he wants to play at ohio state corner he's a corner all right and the fourth guy here jared you have here uh zabian brown yeah uh i think they again good relationship there um th those are the four guys west scott lockhart brown I, I think those are the four guys we have in the class right now I mean that that that'd be fantastic. You get the oh yeah, that'd be the fourth, sixth, and seventh corners in the country. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's I and mean, here's the thing. While it that's, is that's optimistic, <laughs> while it is optimistic, it's not like it's not ridiculous. Like I think it's totally achievable. I'm not saying it will happen. We're dealing with you know 17, 16 year olds. You'd be stupid if you said that. 17, 18 year olds, you'd be stupid if you said, well, that absolutely is what's going to happen because you just never know. You just never know. But I think it's to I think this I think this is totally achievable. Uh, they also have a good relationship with uh, Teron Nichols, who is amazing. Uh, Charles Lester, who's one of the best corners in the country. Um I just I had to limit, my, limit myself to four. I went with the four most realistic. Um, I, I don't think it's over for Lester. I don't think it's over for some of the other guys I, I have on, on my spreadsheet here, but or not a spreadsheet, but you all know what I mean. Um, but it's uh, I, th those are the four I feel the best about. Those are the four I feel the best about. Okay. All right. And the last ones here. For the safeties, uh, have down here Reggie Powers and Jacob Good. I don't don't look at me like you like I have the answer to <laughs> answer key. You're G right, U D E I, I, Jude. I, it might be Jude. Jude. Good. Jude. You're right. Good. Jude. I don't know. Maybe someone in the chat is smarter than us. Anyone? Anyone? Anyway, um, I had no clue. I'm, OK, it makes me that makes me feel better. Um, <laughs> I did remove and I think three safeties are possible. And I did remove from the last couple mocks um, KJ Bolden, who is an amazing player. I hope I'm wrong. I don't think Ohio State's like out of it by any means. I, I'm not I'm not saying throw in the towel. That's over. He's not. I'm not saying that. I'm just trying to put together a realistic recruiting class here. And I think Reggie Powers is an imminent possibility. Um, Jacob. Jude, we're going to go Jude. We're gonna, uh, Jacob Jude, I think, is a um, a very real possibility. And like. In a defense where uh, it's something I see people say a lot. Well, they, they play three safeties now. Are, do you only take two safeties? Well, it's because a lot of the times the the cover, the cover safety is also a nickel back. And therefore, most of the time is brought into the system as a corner. M most of the guys who are, are currently being tapped to play the the cover safety position the nickel safety position our former corners were recruited as corners so it's fine don't worry about it um yeah kyle going down through this list 
who who do you who do you have as next? I gave you next one. I gave you one. You have to pick one, but feel feel free maybe to throw in a couple flyers. But you, but I do need you to pick just one. One person who's going to be committing next. Yeah, who's next? That's the question. Jeez. Question on the table. Who's next? I mean, I mean, April's over, so it's hard. It's hard to <laughs> it's hard to choose. I mean, April was a was a great. As Great was, month for for the Buckeyes. As was March, especially at the end of March. I don't know. I've, I've, I'm, I would go with. I don't know. Uh, if you're really putting telling me a name here, I'm. I'll go with. Uh, I don't think he's going to, but I'll go with Aaron Scott. Scott. I think Aaron Scott is a great pick. Um, because you said Aaron Scott, I'm going to say Bryce West. Uh, I think those are the two guys who I am, am keeping the closest eye on. What's going on with Scott? What do you mean? What's going on with Scott? We're we're we're, we're predicting. We're trying to predict who's who we think go- is going to commit next. If if who's maybe you next? zoned out for a second, I know you said you were driving. Also, quit typing, please. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I I think Bry- I think I probably would have gone Bryce West regardless. Um, there are comments last week where he said he doesn't like people saying he is going to Ohio State. Also, um, at home, well. I don't know. It's he's a child. I mean, he's a teenager. Like it's don't. Oh, you're at home. Oh, you're at home now. Wow. It took me way too long to figure that out. Um, It's fine. Uh, You know, maybe he wanted to commit. Maybe he wanted it to be a surprise and everyone's already. It sucks. Like you're a teenager and you want to feel like you're making a decision and everyone's like, hey, he's going to Ohio State. Like, maybe he wants a little bit of mystery. Maybe he wants his day. Maybe he wants to surprise everyone. Maybe he wants his recruiting event to be special and exciting. And everyone's just like, you're going to Ohio State. And that probably, if you're sitting there thinking, I don't specifically know what that means, Gangland. Um, so I'm just saying, like, maybe he's just like, sometimes you have to poison the well a little bit. And get everyone to think you're doing doing one thing so you can do the other thing so your recruiting can be a little bit your recruiting can be a little bit more um oh because they spoiled the commitment yeah but but like commitments get spoiled like crystal balls have been a thing for a long time now and some kid gets like two crystal balls from the quote unquote right guys and Kyle and I are as guilty of it as anyone else. We just start like writing them into the recruiting class before they even get a say in it. And that's the thing. Kyle and I are just a pair of idiots. We have no insider knowledge on anything. You know, I don't think they give a shit what Kyle and I have to say. Regardless, we're, we're putting together a mock here. We're open about the fact that we're guessing even if it's educated guessing, it's still just guessing. But yeah, I, I have to imagine. Well, when Will Fong says something is coming, um, says it's coming from the horse's mouth. Oh, well, yeah. Well, when Will Fong says something, it's coming from the horse's mouth. I mean, yeah, that that's the problem. This is like you're put yourself in the put yourself in the shoes in the seat of a teenager. This is like maybe the first big decision you've ever made in your life. And when everyone is just penciling you into a school and you haven't made a choice yet, you feel like your choice is being taken from you. Is it actually being taken from you? No, but could it absolutely feel that way? Yes. That would probably piss me off. Me at that age, as defiant enough, as independent enough that everyone telling me where I was going to go, even if they were right, would probably piss me off. 
So when if a kid gets on Twitter, he's like, I'm fucking sick of everyone saying I'm going. I don't know why they probably didn't curse. I cursed. I curse. It's fine. Um, I'm sick and tired of everyone saying I'm going to Ohio State. Yeah, I would probably would be, too, even if I was definitely going. Again, don't think about it as someone in their mid 30s with the mind and the emotions of a someone in their mid 30s. Put yourself be real honest with yourself about what you were like when you were 17. The first big decision you get to make and everyone's telling you what your decision's going to be. It would piss me off. It would. It would piss me off. Also, can I still say mid 30s? <laughs> can I still say mid? Um yeah. Anyway, I, that that's my rant. We can't get we can't do a show without me going off into some rant. Of course. That's all. Of course. Um But yeah, I mean that that's my point. So what? 17-year-old gets mad and says something on Twitter. He's 17. Wait, what do you want? Um but yeah, um Kyle's going Aaron Scott. I'm going Bryce West. Uh, I, I think I think those two are somewhat imminent, although maybe Aaron Scott needs to draw things out a little bit more just so he can have ownership over his own decision, which is fair. Rant, rant, rant. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think people like my rants for the most part. Um. But yeah, let, let, let him have control over his, his own decisions. All right, that's that's everyone. Kyle and I gave our prediction on who's next. Um, some some guys who were just outside of the mock. These are sort of the next the next group of names. Just going to toss these out there without much fanfare or whatever. Uh Wide receiver, Terrence Moore. Offensive tackle, Brandon Baker. Offensive tackle, Jamison Riggs. Defensive tackle, Aiden Breeland. Defensive tackle, DK Kirk. Defensive end, Elias Rudolph. Defensive end, Dylan Stewart. Edge rusher, um, Booker Pickett. Linebacker, uh, Kwai Birdsong. Cornerback, Teron Nichols. Safety, KJ Bolden. I think that's a real solid, like, just outside the mock tier. And I have even more names on the list um, for watch for a watch list. And uh, if you're in the page, if, if you're in the discord, I'll tell you who's in the uh, in the watch list How about that. I'm, I'm going to stick it in one of the secret channels right now. Doing it, doing it right now. Tossing actually uh, <laughs> going to the secret channel, paste, go. And if you were you could probably pause it real quick if you're watching the YouTube video and see who it was, because it was on the screen real quick. Anyway, um, which one is built to be a nickel? Uh, I don't have either of those guys as a nickel. I see those. I see both of those guys as outside corners personally. Um, I, I don't necessarily have a good feel on who is the slot corner among the group and that's maybe not a thing you figure out until they you know actually get on campus actually get on the field get them in pads and and so on and so forth it's not a thing you necessarily know at this stage sometimes you do sometimes a guy you look at a guy and you're like that's a slot corner but sometimes you don't all right um kyle i think i think that's it i think that's the show we got we got a couple we, of transfers that coming into Ohio State. Well, I thought we were going to do that in Kyle's corner. Um, uh, sure. <laughs> you know what? Fine. Let's just talk about. It. We, we we maybe have a different thing to do in in Kyle's corner. Um. So yeah, let, let's just talk about the transfers. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening right now for this upcoming squad, this upcoming team. We said Ohio State needs some offensive tackle or at least some offensive line assistance. Got a little bit of assistance. This weekend. That, that was me kicking it over to you. Okay. I, c I couldn't tell with your, with your tone. It sounded like you're going to continue on. 
no, no, no. That was that was me teeing it up for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Um, you're talking about Josh Simons, the uh, lineman out of um, or transferring from San Diego State, the yeah. Aztecs. Uh, was the 25th best interior lineman in the 21 class, 2021 class. Uh, like Jared said, it's a um, much needed depth in here. I don't think it's the answer Ohio State's looking for to plug in play it, right away. It needs to be stated that despite the fact that he, um, his recruiting profile said interior, um, he did play tackle. He did play tackle at San Diego State. Um, what Ohio State really, really needs to to become what, in my opinion, to to get this team to its full potential. What Ohio State really, really needs is a true left tackle. I don't think there's a true left tackle who is ready. I think there might be some young. There are some young guys who might be true left tackles, but. On the squad right now, not not down the road potential right now. I don't think there's a true left tackle on this team. And while I 100 percent welcome the addition of uh, is it Simmons, right? 100 um, percent welcome him onto the team. Um, I don't think he's like that left tackle. I don't think he is like, and of course, like that's a wish list thing, right? Like how many like true left tackles are even in the portal right now? True yeah. at Ohio state's level left tackles are even available. Are there any in the portal right now? Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, who do we switch then? It is, I am still of the opinion, and I know there are other people who disagree with me. I'm still of the opinion that Donovan Jackson is still a possibility for left tackle. And if you see Josh Simmons as a guard, it's entirely possible that Simmons becomes the left guard, opening up the possibility for Donovan Jackson to move out the left tackle. Is that what they're thinking? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I just honestly don't know. Um, oh, can you do a mock offensive line with current transfers included? Oh, just like who's the mock right now? Kyle, was there a ask Sloopcast question along those lines? Didn't someone ask that question and ask Sloopcast? Oh, uh, let me look here real quick. Oops, that is the shenanigans section. Don't want the shenanigans today. <laughs> no, no, no shenanigans today. Uh, yeah, with Simmons transferred to the Buckeye land, how will the offensive line shuffle come out? Yeah. Who asked it? Uh, Zach. Thank you, Zach. Zach did. Um, I think there's a couple of ways this plays out. Uh, you bring in Simmons to play. Period. I, I don't I do not believe Josh Simmons is a depth piece by any means. You brought you bring you're bringing in Josh Simmons to play. I think he starts what I what I don't know is where. If you're telling me right now he's going to be the left tackle and they're going to bump Fryer over to right tackle. I would be hesitant. But I also wouldn't tell you you're crazy. If you told me that they were going to keep Fryer at left tackle and put Simmons at right tackle, I'd listen. I think that's I think that might be the most realistic possibility. If you're telling me they're going to take Fryer, bump him over to right tackle, bump Jackson out to left tackle and put Simmons in at left guard. I feel like that's also a strong possibility. I'm not sure that uh, Day and Fry know. They might, they might be having or might have had this same conversation and might have this conversation, the exact conversation you're having right now sometime in the future. They're probably asking the same questions, but they're going to have to figure it out quickly. 
because you're going to need to get that offensive line as like a cohesive group. Whatever that group is, you need to get them practicing together. Uh, I don't, I don't know if they know, um, but I think that having Josh Simmons gives you a possible, you know, it opens up, it opens up some possibilities. And I also am hopeful that this is not, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's another offensive lineman yet to come. We'll see. Yep. Yep. And I think there's one more player that Ohio State's looking at right well, now. We to, didn't talk about Zoe in. yet, did we? No, um, nope. Uh, Lorenzo Styles. Yeah. The uh, uh, older brother. The yeah, older, yeah. Yep. The older older brother coming coming back to the state of Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Um, was playing wide receiver for Notre Dame the past couple years. Um, Lorenzo Styles probably a safety at Ohio State. Um, I know he's just he's being discussed as a defensive back. Ohio State recruited him as a defensive back. One of the reasons why he went to Notre Dame is because Notre Dame wanted him to play wide receiver. He's coming back to Ohio State. If anyone forgets, he and his brother are both from Pickerington, which is an eastern suburb of Columbus. Um, he's coming back to Ohio State. He's going to play some defensive back. I assume safety. Um, 6'1", 185, feels like a cover safety. Feels like feels like the nickel slot safety, in my opinion, but that's that's just me taking a guess at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Simmons was the Aztecs best lineman and had three plus years to and has three plus years to play six, six, three or five. Hopefully he's absolutely nasty. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to Simmons, I think this is both a, I think this is both an emergency plug and also a down the road investment. Um, and I think Simmons will get better. I think Simmons worst year at Ohio state will be this year. And hopefully that's a good thing <laughs> and not a bad thing because the talent on this team right now that won't be on this team a year from now will be insane. There's an, there's an insane Ohio state always has talent. Ohio state always, always, always has talent, but my God, the talent currently on this team is insane. They almost beat Georgia last year. And did you see how many of them got drafted? Did you see how many Georgia players got drafted this weekend? More that can start. Ten. I think it was ten. No. Uh, for the entire draft? Yeah, I think so. It was like ten or eleven. I thought it was more than that. Because I was saying more that can play, so I was going for twelve. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, let's look. I am looking right now, and it is ten. It was ten. It was ten, yes. I thought the most a team had was nine. Apparently it was 10. Um, could have sworn it was 13, but whatever. I don't, it doesn't matter. An amazingly talented George. That team was so good. That team was so good that they actually got that piece of shit. Geriatric quarterback drafted by the Rams. How did that happen? I don't know. The talent on this team right now is psychotic. And a lot of this talent won't be here next year. Yep. All right. Anything else, Jared? Anything else you want to uh, mention Tywin before we wrap Malone, it up? who's a name, if you follow Ohio State recruiting, might be a name you know. Ohio State, I think, is in search of a... A uh, defensive tackle, specifically, I would say a nose tackle um, yep. to add to the rotation. I think they have two guys who they love 
at uh, the three tech defensive tackle. And I think they probably have one guy who they love at the nose tackle um, to add a nose tackle is, is I know another thing um, that they were looking to do for the transfer portal. Um, they got their defensive back. They wanted another defensive back. They got styles. Um, they wanted an offensive lineman. They got Simmons. I'd still think that they're in desperate need of an offensive tackle. But again, the guy actually has to be the, in the portal to get. Um, and then you go get, I don't want to say fourth defensive tackle because I don't, I don't think that's a fair way to say it. Um, but your second or maybe even like your one B nose tackle. Yeah, your second. My, my, my call is a potential first rounder next year. Talk about talented guys who won't be on the team. Um, my call potential first rounder next year. Yeah, you, you get you get yourself a, a a second nose tackle. You would be the second nose tackle, but he's still going to get a ton of rotation uh, with uh, Tywin Malone. And again, this is someone Ohio State had a great relationship with uh, during the recruiting process. And he's out in the portal and could be coming back to Ohio State. Cal, you have defensive end written in the notes. They have him listed as a D end, or was that just on twenty four on on twenty four seven? I believe they they did. But you're right. He 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 is he, he is, he is a actually tackle. a defensive tackle. Though. Yeah. Yes. Is there another portal deadline this summer? No. No. I, I do. N- there are there are two portal deadlines. Um, I forget. I think it's like 45. I think there's like a 45 day opening. I want to say 45 from like the moment the bowls are announced plus 45 days is the first portal opening. And then there's the second portal opening, which is April 15th to April 30th. Yes, you are right. Yep. Um, oh, this last one was originally in May. Yes, this the the one that's going to close tonight, tonight for us, yesterday for everyone listening to this. Um, used to run May 1st to May 15th. They moved it up two weeks. Yeah, but, th- but there are there are. There are exceptions to this too. There's always so. exceptions. There's always mm-hmm. loopholes. But, but the biggest, the biggest one, though, the biggest one, is if you have your undergraduate degree. If you've completed yes. your undergraduate, you have a free transfer at any time. Correct. The, yeah, the the, the graduate transfer rule is still in place. The portal did not um, stop that from happening. Um. And also just something else to throw out there. Um, Again, Kyle and I don't necessarily know how the portal ends as far because it's it's part the portal is still open in our future. Um, Or in our present, also in our future, I guess. Um, Needs to be stated. One, the portal is not public access. The media, fans, we can't see the portal. Now, you know, a whole lot of people at a whole lot of universities can. So that stuff does get leaked to the portal pretty quickly. Um, So that's number one thing to keep in mind. Number two thing to keep in mind. See this animate. Okay. Uh, Number two thing to keep in mind is that. It is the deadline to submit to the portal to get the paperwork into compliance. It is entirely possible that someone has submitted their paperwork to the compliance. And then there is a 48 hour deadline for compliance to actually enter the player into the portal. It is entirely possible that Sunday night, Saturday, Sunday, players have entered themselves into the portal via 
the compliance department and that we simply have not seen them either uh, publicly announce it. And also they're just not actually in the online portal yet. So just because the, I guess this is a long way of saying just because a player hasn't gone on Twitter or Instagram and said by Sunday night, Hey everyone, I'm in the portal. Doesn't mean they aren't or that they won't be. You might not, we might see guys announce their entrance into the portal Monday and Tuesday, because I don't know how many people need to hear this. Uh, you don't submit yourself into the into the transfer portal by posting on Twitter. The deadline is not when you put the the post on Twitter. Tossing it out Hi, there, Austin. Jared, what happens when Ohio State is over the limit, but the guys never entered the portal? Ohio State's not over the limit because the deadline's not here. Uh, when yep. the deadline hits, Ohio State will be 85 or below. Uh, you can you can you can bet your entire bank account on that. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. All right, we do have to we do have to wrap things up here, Jared. Though, so um, I'll kind of go into uh, Kyle's corner here. Uh, some some sad news here. Uh, the the voice of the Buckeyes here, uh, Bob Kennedy, uh, passed away on Sunday. Uh, he was scheduled to do a uh, to do the PA for the baseball game today and did not show up. And then the athletic department came out to do a wellness check and yeah, found you out don't, the worst you don't there. have to finish so, that sentence. You don't have to finish yeah, that sentence. So, but yeah, it's sad, sad, to, sad to hear hear him because he. I mean, I've I've always known him for. I can still hear his oh, yeah, yeah. hear his voice still in my in my head still. So hundred percent. Having him not do the PAs anymore, it's it's just gonna be so so different moving forward though. But definitely yeah. definitely uh definitely saddened to hear that. For sure. Um Woody sixty seven says Simmons was a four star interior offensive lineman recruiting but recruited by UCLA. In other words, Coach Fry. Yes. Um so maybe your theory on him playing a guard isn't far off. I mean I don't I, I don't have a theory, I have questions. <laughs> to to be real with you, I don't have a theory, I have questions. Um I think he's a great addition to the offensive line. I am happy to have him. But what if Ohio State wants to win a national title, they need they need someone stellar at offensive tackle. And I don't know that that's a thing that's going to happen. So they're going to have to figure that out one way or the other. Um, I know everyone's like, we'll play two tight ends. By playing two tight ends, you're taking a Mecca Buka off the field. Yes. Do, 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 do you want to take a Mecca book off the field? I don't want to take a Mecca book off the field. Squirrel. Yeah. I was just, I was talking to the chat. Kyle, I was talking to chat. <laughs> all right, but that's it, Jared. That's all I got. Yep. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, gonna go, I'm just going to go ahead and end it. You can go to the sloopcast.com and you can find links to all of our things there that's all the plug i feel like doing um oh i I, actually i do want to thank uh woody 67 who's been in the chat here who is our latest patron i i i did um i did make a call to uh get hopefully get some new patrons and uh woody stepped up to the plate um who, who who's next we asked who's next for the for the recruits, who's next to join the Patreon and become a Sloop Cat? Woody answered the call. Will you answer the call? All right. Tonight's ending music. Tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you. Um, they are a band. A, they in a Cincinnati. I forget. Uh, they're called Mini Gang. Uh, so it's just it's one word. M I N I M I N I G A. NG mini gang. Um, I don't know what that means, Zach. 
Um, <laughs> so uh, brought to you by Mini Gang, ending today's show. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mini Gang. <laughs>